Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and Ouya. We got ourselves an Ouya. This is the latest and greatest console that uh, started as a Kickstarter project, something that uh, was funded by the crowd, you know, people that were really interested in getting their hands on one of these things. And what makes this little game console different than maybe your PlayStation or your Xbox is that it's being marketed as something that's completely open and that you don't need to be you know, any kind of special uh, programmer or have a company uh, to be able to develop games for a television-based console. And uh, it's also running the Android operating system. So theoretically, every Android game that's available right now uh, can be tweaked in order to work with this thing. Of course, there's no uh, touchscreen uh, that you would use, obviously, but uh, you can easily adapt it to the Ouya controller. So it's a pretty, pretty neat little uh, toy here. And we're going to grab my camera and take a quicker, closer look at this console. Um, it's pretty basic. It, uh, it has a nice weight to it. I guess they put some weights in it to make it, make it a, give it a little bit more heft. Um, it has uh, on the side here some names of other Kickstarter backers. Now, my name is not on here, but I'm guessing my name is on somebody else's console, and I guess that they uh, put um, these uh, names on each of the consoles that came out. Uh, the power button is on the top. Um, you cannot start it from the controller. You have to start it from the device itself. Uh, on the bottom, there's some fan vents. It does have a fan on board. It's running a quad-core, um, snap I think, I believe a Snapdragon processor. It's something that's found in some of the higher-end Android phones. And uh, it's been noted in some publications that the difference between this and maybe some Android devices is that there's no power saving because you're plugged into the wall. Uh, you get that full processor power available to you. On the back here, you've got a couple of things. We have a micro USB port uh, above the Ethernet jack there. It's uh, right here, and there's the Ethernet jack. Uh, there's also a USB port, which doesn't work yet, which is a bit uh, disappointing because uh, this thing only has 8 gigabytes of onboard RAM. So uh, some of the larger games that are out there right now, I'm thinking like, you know, if, if Grand Theft Auto, for example, if that ever comes out for this device, you know, the Android version of that is over a gigabyte. So uh, it doesn't hold much out of the box. And right now the external storage doesn't yet work. There are some hacks and some other things that do work with it, but, uh, you know, the, the Ouya interface is not yet uh, supporting external storage. But I would imagine it would pretty soon once the uh, the, the main 2.0 version arrives. So, um, so that's pretty much the console. It's a pretty small uh, little device here, and uh, it's it pretty much uh, pretty well built actually for something that was independently developed. Now, uh, the controller is rather large, and here it is in my hand. Um, it's uh, modeled a lot after the Xbox controller in that you have uh, two of these analog sticks here and a gamepad. Uh, I'm not too crazy about the controller, um, as you can see from my. Uh, unboxing video I did earlier in the week, uh, it came with this uh, side panel completely off and it pops back on. You have to get these panels off in order to install the batteries and it's not easy to get into these things. So you know, it's not the end of the world, but um, there's these little tiny um, grooves that you have to stick something into to get it in there and everything else. A little bit of a pain. Um, the control pad, the D-pad, just like on the original Xbox controller, is pretty useless. It's not uh, very responsive. It, it, it's okay, but it, it's kind of stiff and I'm not too crazy about it. The analog sticks are pretty well done. I, I give them credit for uh, for that because these are not uh, easy things to do. Uh, the buttons are a little, and it's funny, it's a weird thing, but I, I feel like they're too high. So they're not very comfortable. They're a little too far apart. Maybe it's because of the size of the controller. But um, another problem I have is that my um, O button gets stuck uh, in the panel here, which is kind of a pain. I'm going to have to call them. I think it's actually a defective product. Um, you can see here that the uh, the panel flexes a bit on the side. I think it might have been damaged in, in shipment also when it was, oops, get rid of that for a second. I'm going to turn the volume down on my television. There's uh, some neat games out for this thing. Um, neat, but not great. Uh, I'll talk about those in a minute when we get through that. Now, one of the things that's really cool, um, which I thought was really cool, is that because this is an Android device, um, we have a touchpad that's built into the controller. So if you run your finger up and down here, uh, you see you get a little mouse uh, I, uh, uh, pointer going on there, which is uh, really cool. So um, and you need that to navigate around, and it also helps when you're doing some hacking kind of stuff where you're running some of the other uh, Android software that um, wasn't designed for the Ouya, but you still want to be able to use some of those touch effects. It's uh, able to do that for you. So. Uh, that is neat. So, so that's the hardware, and uh, we should probably uh, take a look at the software now. And you know, every game console is only as good as the software that they have available for it. 
and unfortunately this one isn't there yet and it's kind of a letdown to some degree but at the same time i can understand too remember this is only available right now to kickstarter backers there's several you know tens of thousands of them but uh, they certainly have a bit of a ramp up to do before they get to the main production so uh, we're going to take a quick look at all of the the uh, menus and other things that you can step through uh, in the console so let's have a look so when the console is on and you've configured it, you are at the main screen here and there's four options that you have. You have play, discover, make, and manage. And uh, play is what you would expect it to be. It's uh, how you play the games. And there's a couple of games I have installed on here. And I'm gonna show you these in a minute, uh, but I wanna step through the rest of the system first. Uh, discover is the Ouya store and they are basically having every game be free. And the reason they're doing this is they want uh, to not have to deal with the demos and all the other stuff that people um, often get confused about on the Xbox and other things, and that uh, the game that you uh, demo initially will then have an option for you to pay if it's a paid game. So um, there's a couple of different options here. Check it, I would imagine, are things that are new to the store. Um, staff picks are things that their staff likes. There's not too much on here right now, so the staff picks and the check it and the fresh are pretty much all the same stuff, more or less. But uh, you can kind of step through here and do it. And what's nice again is that their, their rule for their store is that every game uh, needs to be free initially. So if you want to play something, you um, just can load it up and have a look at it. I found that it's a little slow in updating. This is um, on Wi-Fi. The OUYA has a Wi-Fi built into it uh, is how we're connecting. And even if it's plugged in with the network, it's still pretty, pretty slow to update. And I would imagine they're just going through some uh, growing pains here. Uh, the games are mostly casual games. And, and I think this is where they're going to have a problem because you know, casual gamers just don't buy game consoles, they buy smartphones. So um, perhaps they're hoping that the, the, the smartphone library of games available for Android will carry over, which it might. Um, but nevertheless, it's, um, it's going to be an uphill battle for them, I think. Um, so that's the, uh, the store. And if you want to buy a game, you just select it. And we can go over here to Bomb Squad. Um, you get a brief overview of it. You can see that 59 other people like it. Uh, and you can click download. And it'll, it'll do that in the background. So we'll let that... Uh, download and we'll go check out some other stuff here while we're doing that so uh, if you back out of the store or the discover you have another area called make and if you're a developer this is something that would be appealing to you because this is where uh, you can really start to write your own games for the console or adapt uh, existing open source software perhaps and it gives you a little bit of a warning to say hey this is for developers only uh, you can set up a developer account if you uh, hit the back button here it lets you in and this is where things get interesting so um, in builds um, this would be something if you were a developer and loading in APKs which are um, essentially Android um, files uh, com you know program com compilations that uh, you'd want to use for that um, but here's something interesting when you go into software and, it, and this is uh, built in it comes with a web browser so you can go in uh, to a web browser here and what I've done is uh, put my Dropbox account front and center so um, I've been loading in um, APKs, and, and you can do something called um, side loading. And what that means is that you basically download an Android APK file, which again is a compiled piece of Android software. And you can then uh, down, put it into your Dropbox, set up a bookmark in your OUYA web browser, and just go in and pull those files down. And if you get an Android file manager, uh, you can essentially go ahead and install all this software that was not written specifically for the OUYA. So I've already loaded in uh, the Xbox Media Center, XBMC, and this has been a, a thing that's out on just about every platform. So I haven't installed it yet, but I did download it because it is a 50 megabyte file. So now once you've downloaded this stuff, you can go over to your software screen here and you can load up a file manager. And I found that some of the file managers can be a little wonky because they're expecting a, a touch screen. So um, what I've done is, is I've found one that tends to work most of the time. It's a little clunky because you're having to kind of fight with um, uh, fight with it here. So let's just see if I can get back into my files. There we go. Um, so now we can browse the entire file system. And again, this is not a, a piece of OUYA software I'm running. This is a basic generic Android a APK file that I downloaded for a file manager. But uh, if we go into the download folder, you can see some of the stuff that I've downloaded uh, from my Dropbox account earlier. And uh, here's that XBMC installation. So we're just going to tap on that and we can install it. Oops. Um, it's a little touchy with this uh, control pad here, so you have to be very careful not to upset it. Uh, we can click install here, and it is going to install. And one of the funny things about the OUYA is that it feels like this, uh, this, this, this hybrid system of something where it has a nice interface that they put together, uh, but it's also dealing with this you know, 
Android interface also that's designed for touch screen. So it's kind of a, a little, little wonky. And you'll see occasionally there are things that uh, really were designed more for an Android uh, handheld than a, than a game console. And you'll occasionally see some weird stuff like SD card, which isn't in here, but it's in here. And, you know, kind of things that might confuse the average user. So XBMC is installed. And now we're going to try to open it. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. So let's see what happens. So uh, preparing for first run, it is loading up everything. And uh, what I did before I started recording is I downloaded a file onto a USB stick here. So we're going to put this in. And let's see if it is able to work with it. Um, we'll go into some videos here. And let's see, uh, files, add videos. I'm probably not going to be able to find anything. Let's see. Yeah, because it's a little confused as to what I have here. But it looks like I could connect to um, other things on my network as well. Uh, add on is marked. OK, let's see. Um, so this is getting really involved <laughs> but um, so we're okay well you get the drift you can take some Android software and just install it I also uh, installed MAME for Droid on here as well it didn't um, couldn't get some of these ROMs to work but basically it uh, it is working and it is capable of running and I haven't played too much with it but it uh, lets you do that kind of thing so so there you go that's the make section it's a pretty neat little uh, area where you can do do a lot and and it's and it's kind of neat to have something this open that you don't have to uh, kind of fight with the machine to get around its restrictions it's something that you can just figure out a way to load software in here and off you go so uh, pretty neat little thing so that's uh, that's the make section um, the manage section is is where you would work on your network and pairing controllers. Um, the nice thing is it does let you use other Bluetooth controllers. So uh, you're not just limited to the Ouya one. If you're not crazy about the way the ergonomics are on it, you can uh, get another Bluetooth controller and, and plug it in there. Um, account is what you think it would be. System um, gives you the ability to at least do run your system updates. Uh, my console is up to date right now. And then when you go into the advanced menu, this is what I was talking about. You get into this weird thing where it's, you know, it's kind of this Android-y interface. It takes you out of that OUYA um, uh, simplicity. So um, there are com some confusing phone-like things here, like airplane mode, VPN, tethering, and portable hotspot. Um, we're obviously not going to make this a portable hotspot anytime soon. Um, and unfortunately, too, and this was a big problem, I couldn't capture uh, the video from this thing directly because uh, it just didn't support it. So... Um, we're running it with a monitor here as well. So the advanced thing gets really, really crazy, and not all this stuff is applicable to uh, what you're running on it. So, so that's a little bit of a letdown there. So let's take a look at the games. So I downloaded a couple here. Um, there's one here that I really find interesting, and this one is called MUA. And this is a Nintendo NES 8-bit emulator. And what they've done is they've created this, this neat little ecosystem for people who are developing 8-bit uh, Nintendo games still. And there's actually quite a really active retro community out there. Some great, great YouTube channels you have to check out uh, to see some of these games. But um, there are folks that are still developing for the original Nintendo. And this MUA has developed a little game store where you can download uh, these 8-bit Nintendo games that are being made by hobbyists and other software developers. And some of them are free, and others cost uh, 99 cents or 5 bucks or whatever. And there's also some... Uh, little features you can uh, you can add like uh, cheating minutes and replay uh, capabilities and that kind of thing. So uh, it's kind of neat. What it also does though is if you want to load in your own games, like here I've put in Super Mario Brothers, uh, you can uh, run that as well. I have found that the control is really bad on this thing, and I don't know if it's the emulator that it's running or if it's just the Ouya just not being tweaked yet. But um, I found the controls to be pretty wonky, and again, my buttons keep getting stuck. So it's it's you know it feels really pretty lousy actually. It's certainly not uh, as good as the real Nintendo. There's a bit of a delay and a lag. Um, and, and the color is really off on it. So uh, they need to do some, some work on this thing. Uh, what's cool is that when you want to get out of an app, even if you're stuck in an Android app that wasn't designed for it, you just double tap that and you get back. So let's take a look at maybe a game that was designed for it. There's, um, you know, their big one that they're really touting is Final Fantasy III. Um, it's great, but it's an older game. Um, the Ball is a newer game um, that's powered by the Unreal Engine. And, you know, you, there, there really isn't a you know, a cache game, you know, the game that really is going to make this system work. And part of the problem is, is that, you know, this thing is really not all that powerful when you compare it to like a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360 or whatever they're coming out with next month. It is 
essentially a smartphone that you plug into your television. And on a smartphone screen, you know, graphics like, like what you're going to see in a minute here look pretty good, but when you put it on a 1080p display in your living room, it suddenly doesn't look so great. And then you begin to wonder, you know, is this $100 console really worth it? And that's, you know, I think where they're going to run into trouble. So, you know, the graphics aren't bad, but when you really look at the, the detail, um, you know, it may be like PlayStation 2 level. You know, it feels like it's about a decade behind where the current systems are, are at graphically. And, you know, for 2D casual games, it's probably fine. Uh, but at the same time, you know, is there a compelling reason to get away from your uh, from your smartphone to use something like this. And I think that's going to be the problem. So um, overall, the Ouya is a, is a great, I, I, I think it's great for what it's going to be. And I think it's going to be more of a enthusiast hacker kind of gaming console and less of something that is going to be a mainstream consumer item. And I don't think that's what the, uh, the makers of Ouya are hoping for. I think they're really hoping to open up a new games market of independent developers connecting with users. But you know that only works when there's a lot of people adopting the technology. And you know, I see people really happy with their smartphones. I see people who are casual gamers who are not buying a phone to play games. They're buying a phone to make phone calls and to do email. But it also happens to play games when they're not looking to be making phone calls. So, um, so there's, there's, some, there's some things that are, I think are going to have to be worked out with this thing. Um, I do see that it has the potential for uh, the enthusiasts and the independent developers to be really something special, mainly because there's a lot of horsepower in this box. I think it's going to be great for emulation, running uh, MAME and old arcade games and that sort of thing. Uh, but as a modern game platform, it, it falls short. Uh, right now, in its current state, I would not recommend buying it at $100. I think it's a little too much for what it does, and it doesn't do all that much. Um, but I think as the development community starts working with the hardware, we're going to see a lot more stuff out of here. If you want to spend a little bit less, I would suggest taking a look at the Raspberry Pi, which is a uh, $30 computer that, that does a lot of similar things and has a great development community around it. Um, and that's a way to really start playing around with this kind of platform stuff because there's a lot more people involved with it. Um, but nevertheless, this thing is powerful. It's a quad-core uh, Snapdragon processor, I believe. It's got or maybe a Tegra processor. Um, it has uh, the capability to do you know, quite a bit, but uh, it's not going to replace your Xbox 360 or your PlayStation 3. So that's the Ouya. I would love to uh, answer your questions. So if you have uh, questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section, and I'll do another video and go a little bit more in depth. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.